just started. As I said, the first talk is about uh, infant swimming and uh, benchmarks and practical progressions of a baby underwater. Basically, you have three types of infant toddler programs. Are you or your teachers consistently creating positive, memorable experiences in the pool? Reason whatsoever that learning to swim should involve crying or high levels of anxiety so high because of over aggressive teachers or parents. I, I say that with a um, extreme passion that you want learning to swim to be such a wonderful experience that you, you are instilling a lifelong love affair with the water. Drowning prevention is a layered approach. Learning to swim saves lives, but you, you, you can't just depend on that one thing. And why, if, 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 if we can have a 19 month old under the water looking like this, why not go about it that way and use those layers versus taking the chance that you are going to uh, potentially destroy a child, not only um, where they might not want to ever swim again. Let me show you how do these toddlers do, where they're learning to swim uh, in a progressive but yet a child-centered environment. And that when the 
child is skill ready, at that time, you will guide them through that progress. Do you remember this thing? Instant swimmer, just add water. If you're a competitive swimmer, you probably all had a cap that said that. Okay, well that's the way people think. They want things instantly. That's the way your swim parents will think if you don't educate them. What do they see without your guidance? Here's, I'm gonna, this is an email that I got, June 9, 2010. I'm, here's the letter. Jim, we're very pleased with Laura Stafford's progress in, in her swim lessons. Megan said, okay, I wasn't there. Megan said she thought Laura Stafford was physically ready for the next class. But your 101 class is three and up. Laura Stafford is only two years and six weeks. Do you think she could enroll in 101 despite her age? Or is that a strict rule? We just don't want her to lose the skills that she has already gotten. And it seems like a waste of time to take parent me class again. Thanks. Now, that's where the benchmarks come in. And this is why your communication is so important. It was also, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to communicate everything I was about to communicate, and uh, that's what you're about to see. Hello, Alan. Your question's a common one, and I believe this is a great question, and one that I will blog about for you and other parents, not to mention Hammer Home with my teachers. I was really kind of disappointed in that my teacher said that uh, she was ready for 101, you know, I don't know exactly, you know, he might have, you know, shared something second hand, but uh, he took it how he took it. So, I'm also going to hammer this up to my teachers. Second, I want to communicate that what I'm about to recommend for you, for Laura Stafford, and all of our wonderful young toddler swimmers, is the same route that I take for my own children. A little background on toddlers and swimming progression and why the parent and me class is the right one for toddlers under the age of three. We are signed up for the next class and here's a uh, time to sign up transaction history. By the way, time to sign up, let's go to Laura Stafford's history for this presentation and you can see, okay, she signed up in May, that was the one she was in. Then after, uh, after my letter, she signed up in the, the next session and then the next session, and then the next session, and then the next session. So, you want to keep your children coming back, one of those returning customers, um, you've got to educate them. And that was, and that was the, the whole point of that part of this, of the benchmark section. All right, parent V progressions. Um, progression is our breath control progression. And it is, progression is what we do in the parent V class, the parent is, or the teacher is involved with that progression. Here, 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 here's, here's one of the tricks um, in terms of doing the dolphin dip. You've got to be very gentle. You've got to be very, the dip has to be, the dip has to be gentle. The dip has to be subtle. And what I was finding when I was letting the parents do so many of them is their dips weren't so gentle. Their dips weren't so subtle. And I don't know if it was because they didn't know how to do it. I mean, I would explain it. I don't know if it was nervousness. Um, but they just rarely did it the way I wanted them to do it. And, and so I start them real close to the surface of the water. And I give them a one, two, three breath cue. And then after the breath cue, then it, so it's one. Um, thumbs are over the shoulders. One, two, three just enough to get their whole face in the water, and then up, and then I give them to the parent. And one of the tricks, besides being soft and gentle and not dunking them, I did a whole podcast on should we dunk babies, um, it shouldn't be down underwater. It does, when, and, and, and again, the second trick, besides the soft and gentle versus the way down and way up, the second trick is you do it now, and you do it toward the parent. 
because the security is in mom. Okay, the security is is not in in you until they really get to know you. Then that might change. But so, uh, and then the and then finally, a third little trick would be when you're ready to do the first dolphin dip with uh, infant or toddler. Don't go get the baby from mom or dad and then talk and then decide to do it. You got to do your explanation first, baby. One, two, three. So you don't give them time to process what's going on. If they have enough time to process that stranger has me and all that, then they're going to be scared to get upset before you even have a chance. So often the progression, we're going to look at um, a little bit of the back kick and swimming progression, and then from and then I'll take your questions and then we'll take a break. Okay.